。今早十点，涉嫌绑架中国女访问学者张怡的嫌犯柯泽松首次出现在位于香槟市的联邦法庭。整个庭审时间大约九分钟。美国中央电视、美国之网的记者今早八点也赶到了法庭。在法庭门口，我们可以看到数百民众声援营业，希望能够严惩凶手。这边联邦法官会组织也会进行 arraignment， 所以想要那个就施加压力，让法官不要把嫌犯放回那个社会，然后给大家带来更多的人身危险。I just feel so sad about her and her family. So I'm here just to support her, to support her family.、Uh, she should know that she is not alone. I hope she is safe and she can return、uh, to her family. The family came in. The boyfriend sat. So if the if the there were two sides, left and right.、Mm -hmm. The family sat on the right side.、Mm -hmm. the, the, the suspect sat here, and they looked straight at the suspect when he came in.、Oh uh, just they were just focused on, him. not angry, just looking at him, very focused.、Mm -hmm. And probably the first time he'd seen him. He had his beard, short. Cropped hair, thinning hairline,、mm -hmm. black and gray striped jumpsuit, and he was wearing、uh, shackles on his ankles, so he couldn't walk very well. They went through and they said, on June 9th, the victim YZ was abducted in a black Saturn Astra. Since the vehicle was made out of Illinois, used a transporter, that makes it a federal crime. So the wife is coming. The guy's wife. I, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to ask the attorney. It、okay. looked like it to me, but there were three people who were, you know, came in like this, where everybody else just walked in. They looked a lot more uncomfortable than anybody else, and they were escorted. Today, Brent Christensen appeared in court, and he has been charged by complaint. What that means is it's like a preliminary charge. He's been charged with kidnapping. And if convicted, the penalty is up to life in prison. At this point, there are two additional hearings scheduled. The first is July 5th at 3 o'clock, July 5 at 3 p.m., and that will be to determine whether or not Mr. Christensen would remain in law enforcement custody pending trial. A temporary order of detention has been entered by the judge. The judge is a U.S. magistrate judge, Eric Long, and the next hearing is July 14th at 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. Excuse me, July 14th at 10 a.m. And that is a preliminary hearing where the government has to show probable cause. Suspect's family was in the back of the courtroom. I, I have no information on that. I'm not aware of that. We're not liable. We'll get run over. This is a this is a case that a lot of people have been following. There's a lot going on in this case, and a lot of people have made up their mind about what happens. Now is the point in time when a lot of really good, really old laws kick in to make sure that the process is fair, to make sure that the presumption of innocence is maintained while these proceedings. Go on. My job is to make sure that that happens. At this point, we're very early on in the case,、um, and as long as everyone、uh, keeps an open mind and listens to the evidence and doesn't jump to any conclusions, I think that'll be for the best. Ying Ying's family's position is actually very simple and very clear. First, the first point is. 尽快找到莹莹，带她回家。呃，第二点，呃，对造成莹莹这么样的伤害或者这个呃已经不在人世的这个事实的犯罪分子，呃、要绳之以法，要让他配出最终的呃
代价，那么莹莹的家人呢是毫无疑问希望检方要寻求死刑，这个立场是非常清楚、非常强烈的。